Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to quickly and easily frame your television. Bring you exclusive insider tips and tricks straight from our factory. Okay, let's get to it. Here we have the finished TV along with all of the various parts that I'm gonna be using today to build it. Starting, of course, with the frame sticks themselves. This is a Yakisuke frame from Japan, also known as burnt cedar wood or carbon. Going back, we have our list of parts starting with the safety glasses, notepad, tape measure, some premium wood glue, number six screws, and if you're making a mirror television, you'll want a sanding block. And this is a, another measuring tool to measure the depth of the TV and some isopropyl alcohol cleaner. This is the dielectric mirror and a microfiber cloth for cleaning it. If you're cutting glass, you'll want some high quality running pliers as well as a glass scoring tool that'll just make your life a lot easier. Moving on, we have corner braces of various sizes, all of which you can find at your local Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, or other hardware store. Here's some more specialized braces for keeping the TV in place. And some aluminum channel and Z-bar hanger to affix the TV to the back of the frame. Okay, moving on, we have some clamps, and those will hold the frame in place while the glue is setting, keeping a really tight bond. This is an IR infrared repeater that plugs into the USB port of your TV, and it passes the signal of the IR straight through the frame. As well as some little rubber brackets in case you need to fine tune the position of the TV later. Okay now, let's measure the bezel of the TV so we know just how to make the frame. Let's make sure and write down all of the measurements so that we have them handy later. Okay, let's measure the frame width of each of the frames and write that down so we can do our calculations accurately as to the overall size that we'll need which is the size that you'll want to cut those frame sticks. Okay, let's cut them now. Set the saw to a 45 degree angle and while applying firm pressure, cut each of the sticks. You'll need to start from this side to make a perfect cut. I'm going to show you why that is in just a moment. Sometimes you may need to go down a second time slowly to get that cut just perfect. Or even a third time. Okay, moving on, we'll want to cut each of the sticks to that measurement that you took earlier. Now that you've cut the one side of the frame, simply flip your saw around and cut the other angle. Doing this technique will ensure a perfect cut every time. Go really slow so as not to damage the laminate near the area of the cut. Okay, let's gather up all of the frames that we just cut and we'll take them over to a uh, special piece of hardware which is highly useful called a uh, under router. This will route out the bottom of each of the frames 
You'll want to set that to the measurement you took of the bezel earlier. As well as carefully adjust the height to the rabbit of the frame. Okay, using the thickness of the glass, if you're doing a mirrored television, you can calculate exactly how deep you want that router to go. You want to allow for some space for the frame. That is, space for the glass. Okay, adjust it carefully and clamp it down securely into place and we're gonna run each of those frames through. Now keep in mind on some TVs the top will be a different measurement than the sides or from the bottom. Oftentimes the bottom is bigger to accommodate that extra you know speakers and infrared system that the television has. While on other TVs all the sides may actually be the same which would just make your job easy. Okay, let's run each of these through. Okay, now we're going to glue the frame sticks together. Of course, first you'll want to Hold them up against your TV and make sure you cut them to the correct size before doing the gluing. Because nothing's worse than finding your frame doesn't fit after the fact. Okay, let's spread that glue. Apply a uh, generous but thin layer and spread it over the surface of the frame. The entire area of the corner. Okay, push them together as hard as you can. And then we're going to clamp them down into place while they glue. The clamps will ensure an extra secure bond between the corners. Okay now, clamp it down and clamp it down good. We don't want those frames moving at all. One of the worst things that can happen is you walk away from your table only to find out your frames have shifted and they glued in the wrong position. So we'll make sure we get that spot on. Set a timer for a minimum of one hour or more. Okay, and there you have it. The front of the frame is fully complete. Now at this point, I recommend placing it over your TV just to make sure it fits. Double check that. Moving on, we're going to place the TV into the frame and measure it one final time for the back build frame. Now the back build frame is really cool because when you hang the TV on the wall, you don't want a big gap between the front frame and the wall because that just wouldn't look right to have a one to two inch gap in there. Okay, let's run those frames through just so that you're not gluing the entire frame stick to the back of the frame. You only want to glue a portion of that. Okay, now we're going to have to do the same thing for those back build sticks that we did for the front part of the frame. Let's make our right angle cuts. Okay, now we're going to take the cellophane that the TV was in and lay it down on the table. That way, the front of the frame isn't going to get scratched when we work with it on the table. We're going to want to clamp those back build frame sticks right onto the front of the frame. And there you have it. The back build 
is glued to the front of the frame. Now we're going to put some brackets on the back just to hold it together extra good. Okay, now we're going to cut the special dielectric mirror, which you can find on our website. Okay, now place the brackets along the back of the TV and screw them into place to hold the TV securely into place. Now let's place the infrared IR repeater onto the back of the TV. Now there are three parts to the IR. There's the IRI. That's the IRI and it goes right against the infrared of the television, which is most frequently located just as you see it here. Each model is a little bit different. You'll want to plug the USB into the powered USB specifically of your television. Okay, and that final piece that you see there, that big piece, that is the receiver. And that needs line of sight to your remote when it's installed. There's an optional power adapter for TVs that don't have a powered USB. Some of them just simply have a regular USB. Okay, one important thing in the end is to make sure that if you're building mirror TV, you've turned up the backlight because there will be a minute amount of light loss due to that extra material in front of the screen. So this will easily compensate for it by adjusting the settings. In addition, you'll want to turn the eco mode off because if the eco mode is on, it may actually think the TV is in a dark environment and therefore adjust even darker, which you wouldn't want. You want a nice, bright, vivid picture. So let's turn that off. And testing it to make sure that there is absolutely no lint or other types of dust between the mirror and the television. Okay guys, all done with the awesome Yakisugi TV. Are you working on a frame TV of your own? Tell us about it in the comments below or shoot me an email with any questions you have. This is James with TwoWayMirrors.com. Sign on our website for more exclusive tips and information as well as to pick up your very own dielectric mirror.